YouTube channel to see if you guys are there. And I'm clicking over to our Facebook page to see if you guys are there. And I just got the notification, so we must be going live. Yes, fantastic. Let me make sure that my all my sound is down and I've got you guys there and I think hopefully I am live on YouTube as well let me see <clears throat> if I can find that uh, let me make sure it's great to be back for free tip Friday I'll tell you there we go I can see us live now look at us look at us all right here look there we are i'm gonna just make sure that i can see everybody chatting and i just got a notification from um karen that we are also up on the website so yay we are good to go <clears throat> give me a thumbs up you guys if you can hear me um we're still working a little bit on our settings and our sound and all that kind of stuff but we're getting there but look it's friday it's free tip friday and we're all here together um if you do see i see it up and running on <clears throat> on youtube if you go to our beadshop.com page i think you'll see it up there as well so it's great it's great to have everybody here um and uh we'll get going uh, Gita is here as beadshop.com doing some linking and stuff as well. So happy Friday. I see people jumping on. It's great to see you. Um, it's yeah. And the YouTube, Tina, you may just be missing the YouTube feed because I can see it running right up here. It's on our main page. And if you click on videos, um, I bet you'll find it. Um, but we will, uh, have it all, um, It'll all be up. Oh, great. Thank you, Gita, for, uh, for linking that up. So you can watch this broadcast at any time after the fact, if you're not watching it with us live. Uh, I'll be seeing you later. Um, okay, so my story, I'm sticking to it. Let's start, and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the project we're going to be playing around with today. Those of you who... Uh, our members of the bead table, our Facebook uh, kind of fan group. Um, Drea, our um, customer service specialist, our customer happiness team of one, um, built a really cool uh, project uh, not long ago. It was a necklace and earrings suite, I guess I'll call it. She was going from uh, to a kind of a fancy adult prom and made this great jewelry. And people were asking, oh, Drea, how did you do that? And she's explained it a little bit. But I thought it would be really fun to kind of delve into that a little bit more. Um, and it's also something that we kind of covered at the bead retreat that we did last year, which is this kind of wrapping um, and embellishing chain links with beads and wire. It's super easy and really, really effective. Um, I also wanted to mention, speaking of the bead retreat, and I'll speak of it again at the end of the broadcast, for 2019, our bead retreat starts on September 13th of this year. It's our third annual bead retreat. And uh, you can find it, uh, it's called The Journey, this year's subject, it's called The Journey, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Emily and Janice and I will journey you through kind of a voyage of self-discovery in your beadwork, and you and 24 of your new best friends will be there. It's in San Juan Batista, California, and as I said, it's our third annual um, spots. We just have a few spots left, so if you are thinking about joining us, you can just put a quick deposit down, and then you have the option to pay the balance in two payments, so you can kind of spread that payment out. Though, I do think, I'll be honest, we've tried to keep it very affordable, and the price includes your lodging and meals and instruction and all of uh, the goodies and everything that we hand out at the retreat. So it's a really, I think it's a great beating value and you will make friends, uh, I think beating friends for life. Um, almost everyone um, 
is coming again from last year. We had a few people um, who due to tra travel constraints or different things couldn't join us this year. So there are a few spots open and we'd love to have you join us. So um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it and I'm going to um, now move over to our projects and let's take a look at uh, what we're going to be playing with today. Let me take a bracing drink of coffee and I'll move you guys around. Okay, so um, bear with me here. I'm going to move the camera so you're going to see everything move. Someday we'll have a multi-camera feed. Um, that's my new goal anyway. So we'll see. It's always good to have goals, right? Um, but that was pretty... Um, I don't know, painless, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to um, kind of adjust the camera up a little bit. It's great to see all friends here, fun people, uh, all of you guys on here uh, popping in and saying hello. So hello, everybody. My friend Francesca, who I just saw all but briefly um, in Tucson when we were in Tucson. Um, Francesca was teaching a series of wonderful metal smithing classes. You can find her, um, uh, all of her classes at the Makery Arts, uh, dot com out there in Bolverde, Texas. My buddy, um, tr uh, Tammy Drennan, happy birthday yesterday, Tam. Uh, Tam was also out there with me in Tucson. We had a lot of fun, and I see a lot of our bead table members, which is awesome. Stephen James, uh, Mr. S uh, enameling uh, guru extraordinaire, I saw him jump on, so... We're in a land of, uh, of, I guess, beating VIPers, I guess. So it's great to have all of you guys here, though. I missed these Fridays, you know. I don't know if you guys have missed these Fridays, but Free Tip Friday to me is such kind of a fun, casual um, event, you know, that I really love how, um, how we get to spend kind of this a little more of an intimate time beating together so uh it's great to be back for that so if you guys um oh and janice just popped on great janice hello janice it's great to have you um here uh as well um seeing everybody on here um so if uh i think we can all see pretty clearly i'm gonna actually take the little branding off. I think I can. I'm going to take that off so you guys can see a clear view. There we are. And I think the lighting looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to test one thing if you guys will bear with me. I think it's pretty bright. It's a little brighter um, on my uh, on my uh, Bear with me here. A little bit brighter on my computer on YouTube than it is on Facebook, but it may just be I don't have my settings all the way done correctly. But I do want to see if I can brighten up this view just slightly. Let me see if I can. Um, I just want to go up. Now tell me, we're like at the eye doctors again. Is this better? I don't really see much of a marked change there. I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm gonna make it just a little bit brighter. There we go. Well, I think that looks okay, I think. Let's see, we're not too blown out. All right, well, that's what we're gonna go with. So we could screw around with these um, settings all day but it's great to uh to be back on um the facebook live so great well good and thank you janice for your feedback i'm just going back and forth between youtube and facebook and it looks good on both great well you can see i you would laugh if you could see me here in the studio i have three different screens i've got my phone that way i've got my ipad this way and i've got the computer over there so i can see all of the and all of the of the screens so it's always exciting and fun so let's get to uh the project i'm gonna turn this a little bit 
I keep saying we're going to get to it and I keep adjusting, but I really want your view to be as good as I can get it. There we go. Alrighty, so here we are. Let me show you, um, and I'll, I'll try and, uh, for those of you on the bead table, and maybe Drea can also do it later, um, Drea's um, completed piece that she uh, made for her grown-up prom um, is up on the bead table, and it's really, really cool. What, what Drea did was she took this three... And there it goes. My desk is starting to get messy. All right, starting to get messy. She used this Three Worlds chain that we just love here um, at Bead Shop. It's uh, on our last round of chain that we added in. We added this guy here, and I was the one who actually picked a lot of that chain. And when I saw this chain, I was like, "I'm I'm adding this in uh, right away um, because it really." harkens back to a handmade chain that I've made for many, many years. It has kind of a handmade kind of vibe to it. Um, I really, really love it. And it comes in all of the usual finishes. We have it in the satin gold. Let me get this other one here. I didn't bring everything over from Fulfillment um, to play with, but I did bring the antique brass, the Hamilton gold, and I brought the bright silver. Um, oh no, I brought the antique silver. Sorry, this isn't the bright silver. Um, but these three here. And I, again, I think it has such a hand wrought look. So if you're wishing, oh, you know what, I would love to be able to solder some chain or solder links together, but you don't either have the time or the wherewithal to do it, this is a great kind of stand in for that. The other thing that we have for these, and, and essentially what Drea did, before I get to these guys over here, essentially what Drea did was she took some larger beads, I think she used six millimeter in her pieces, and the six mil, she took those and she wrapped around uh, the rings in the chain, and it just looked so high end and so, uh, as Auntie Mame would say, top drool. Um, they really were fantastic. So um, that was kind of her her deal that she did with these. You could also, and I'm going to pull these out so you guys can see. These are some of the ones that I was also when we were playing around at the bead retreat. Um, we used some of these nun design rings as well and we added them into stock um we have them now in this is the medium hoop i don't have the mini hoop here but you guys are very familiar with the mini hoop that we love so much this is the medium hoop size and then we also have this large hoop um i'm going to grab you know what i didn't grab and i can see it right across the room from me i'm going to grab the um uh the millimeter gauge I should never have that millimeter gauge far from me, right? So I can tell you what size these are. Let me get that so I can measure. Um, I need to wear it at my hip like a, in a holster, right? There we go. Sorry, I just, I dropped a couple things while getting to the millimeter gauge. <laughs> but let me grab it. This is the beauty of doing my Friday broadcast by myself. I don't, oh, whoops, sorry. That was a big... A big fall, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm back. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. I need a production assistant on Fridays. If you're driving by, just stop in and I'll put you on the other side of the camera. Um, here is our millimeter gauge, and I want to measure all of these rings for you so you can see them. Um, on the chain, the Three Worlds chain, and if you don't have a millimeter gauge, you know how I feel about this. I love it ever so. Um, we're going to zero it out. Let me show you the biggest ring on the millimeter gauge here on the chain. It's just shy of 22 millimeters. Okay. And I know, right? Hearing those sounds, it was like, you know, I don't know, like the Carol Burnett show or something when they would do, you know, have the background or they would hear the background noise or something and people would crack up. It was kind of the same thing, right? Um, the chain in thickness is uh, just shy of a millimeter thick, and you can see this one, it's kind of squared off a little bit. 
um, it's connected with a round link, okay? There's an interior link to this three worlds. It's right here. Um, that one's also kind of squared off. That size is just shy of 18 millimeters. There we go. Can you see that? And then the one that connects them is round. It's not squared off. Again, it's a little thicker than about one millimeter in thickness and uh, just shy of 15 millimeters in size. Okay, so I'm going to free uh, three of these rings and you guys can see uh, how they go together, but I'm going to free these guys up. I'm going to clip it. These are so well soldered. It's hard to see, but let me get right in there. I'm going to clip it right on the solder join. You can see there. There it is. I'm using my Zuron, my maxi shear cutter. And the maxi shear gives a nice clean cut. These rings are soft. It's not like I would be cutting memory wire with these, so they're not going to hurt um, the tips of your pliers. Let's just open it up, take these rings off, and take all three of these rings off. And then I'm going to close this back up, okay, because that's still a usable ring. So there's my three, right? And so we've got kind of a medium, a small, and a mini, maybe, or maybe a, yeah, large, medium, and small, whatever. But we've got three different sizes. You can see that, right? Then in the Nun Design hoops, again, I didn't grab the mini hoop. I only grabbed the big hoop and the large hoop and the medium. This one is a generous, almost 35 millimeters, pretty big, okay? Then um, our medium one is just shy of 25 millimeters, okay? So, um, so it's good. They're a good, uh, they're a nice, clear, clean size to work with. So if you want to work with something bigger, you can um, kind of graduate up let me put all of these in order here. The mini hoop that we have is about this size. So there we go, there's the size comparison for all those, okay? Gorge. All right, so the way, it, like I was talking earlier with this guy, this ring, you can see this is the large hoop from Nun. And I'm gonna be using 24 gauge wire today on all these wraps, but you could pop up to 22 or down to 26, okay? So that range, 22, 24, 26, will all work for this process. And you can see I use some labradorite rounds here. These are four millimeter rounds. And I just simply wrap them around the hoop, right? Easy peasy, all right? And I'll, I'll show you um, uh, how I did this in just a second. But let me put that down and let me show you these links here. These are links that I soldered because, you know, those of you who know me from the metal world uh, know that I do a lot of metal working. And these are just very simple links that I've soldered together and then shaped and then also used to wrap around. So you can see here how it's the same technique, only I've used seed beads here. You can see the seed beads, how small. I actually use Delicas here. And then I did a lot of just kind of wrapping, 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 and then added a four millimeter bead here and here just to embellish, right? Then here I used some pearls from Emily's pearl stash that she bought to the, um, uh, to the retreat. I grabbed some of these little tiny Keshi pearls, which were so charming and I wrap just a portion of each ring that way. So it's the same technique, just applied a little differently. Again, here are a portion here on this side and here on this side, a uh, plain link, then one with uh, pearls going around. And then finally, this one here, I added them, I wrapped them not to the side, but I wrapped them on top. Can you see the, the sideways view there? so you can go to the top or the side. Here is that handmade clasp. You guys have seen me make this hand wrought clasp before, 
but I uh, also embellish it with that four millimeter you can see right there and then to uh, that might be both delicas a size 10 delica beads Kim Crawford just mentioned I may be a seed bead girl too you know Kim I think we all started with seed beads I mean I you know or, or dabbled in seed beads so you know for sure I don't know I guess I'm an omni beater I like I like all beads, but you know, it's just, I don't know. I guess it depends on what day it is, right? I don't know. Um, but I think pearls do look great with this wire. And I wanted to mention, <clears throat> let me get up close and personal with those guys. And I'll be honest, I haven't tested on these Nun Designs um, or our chain. Um, the pre-made components may have some kind of coating on them to keep them from tarnishing. But the ones that I made by hand, and you can see I brought, um, let me get these out of the way. I brought this bare copper wire in the mix. Um, the bare copper is completely solderable. It's hard to see because there we go, it's a little shiny on there but I have 18, 16, 24, and 26. This bare copper wire right here, this 16 gauge, you could use just that to make, if you solder, to solder those rings. And then what I used as my um, antiquing solution, and you guys have seen me do this in our um, Viking knit class, right? I used the liver of sulfur gel and I mixed, mixed up a very small batch and then I did all of these first and then I dipped them in. The LOS gel, um, the LOS itself will not harm any of these beads and if you use it especially fresh, um, you don't leave them in there for very long at all, right? A quick dip will actually do it. If you're using something else as your antiquing solution, like um, silver black or black max, um, that will eat away, especially your pearls. Ask me how I know this. I remember way back in the day, some of the first things I antiqued and I dipped them in, and I'm looking at it going, why is that kind of fizzling like an Alka-Seltzer? And it was the pearls just fizzling away. So LOS though is very natural stone friendly. Again, you don't want to leave things in there to soak for a long time, especially pearls or soft stones or crystals that have a coating. But fresh LOS gel and copper, the result is almost immediate, okay? And if you go to beadshop.com, Gita just put the link up on the live feed, um, but we do carry the liver of sulfur, and I have a little kind of written tutorial that will talk to you um, about how to um, mix it up. It also comes with a little instruction um, um, sheet as well. So uh, it's very easy to use. I'd make sure that you use it outside in a um, well-ventilated area because it is stinky town, okay? So just make sure that you have a lot of air around you as you're using this. Okay, so let's um, uh, let's look at the um, at how we actually make these things. Yep, thank you, Vanessa. I love the pearls, and I mean, let me just get that up. We have rice pearls on the website. These I think were from my stash, but our rice pearls are very similar. Um, for pearls, I think I used 24 gauge here, but 26 would look amazing as well. And again, I just this kind of has that vintage kind of circle pin kind of feel to it, right? That you might wear on a on a little sweater set or something. I just think it's just super charming. I love it. So I'm glad you like it too. Okay, so first off, let me put this stuff aside. Let me get our picture a little bit bigger here so you guys can see. I want to show you how you might be able to shape these um, these links. And again, this three worlds chain, it's perfect for this. The solder joins, I can't even see where they are on this, um, on this link. It's just, they're so well done. For those of you who are coming um, 
uh, to this a little bit late, I took apart the three volts chain by clipping the round link that's here, but I'm putting it back together um, because we can also use this. But on these two chain links here that, uh, that I've cut away that are still soldered, um, you can come in, and this is how I do it when I solder my own links. You can come in and see how I have this round nose plier, and I can just gently now stretch this link out. Look at that. So it went from a circle to a nice oval. Now I could also come in if I wanted to make this even a little more elongated, uh, I could, but I kind of like this oval shape. Um, I could put this maybe a little more on the tips here. There we go. Come on, go on there. And pull just a little bit more, gentle, gentle. Pull it in tight, there we go, look at that. Ta-da! And they're already hammered. They're already flattened. See? So we're just, we're ready for that. Let me, um, let me shape this other one. What we could also do, if you guys can see this, is we could take our chain nose pliers and let me see if I can make this into a little more of a square shape maybe. Let me see. They have been work hardened to retain their shape. So coaxing them into a different shape can be a little bit of a challenge. But if you keep at it, see how I'm using, I'm squaring it off with the corners of my plier there. And you know, even if it doesn't work out, you're only wasting one link. You know, it's a voyage of discovery, right? No great reward without risk, right? And so we just will try that and see how this is shaping. But see how I'm really using the side of this plier to um, make my shape. There we go, that's a nice corner. That's a nice corner. Let's see if we can make that nice corner here. Maybe. And we just keep walking around and walking around and square this off. Now, uh, most of our chains, and you can explore the chains, and you've seen me kind of take them apart and use different, um, different components of the chain for different things. You can, um, with any soldered chain, you can usually you know, cut it apart, alter, um, alter the shape, that kind of thing. There we go. Did I was I too heavy-handed as I was doing this? Uh, it's a it's a great uh, question. Teresa asked, "Could you anneal them to shape them better?" It's a great question. Um, these chains we couldn't anneal. Annealing means that we would take them under heat, under our torch, and soften them so that the wire becomes more malleable. Um, these chains are plated, not raw, okay? And uh, the raw uh, chain, if it was raw, we could do it, but the plating will not stand up to, um, unfortunately, to the heat of the torch. And again, um, Olivia, uh, I think it was Olivia who just asked, um, yeah, Olivia, you can use large jump rings. You don't know how to solder. It's fine. Like this chain, these are just a series of large jump rings that I've cut apart. And you can see these, we have these loops. And then I'm going to go back and use this chain link that I clipped um, to, uh, to, uh, to use as well. So you certainly don't have to know how to solder. Um, this large loop has given me a little bit of... Sass. So I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead and make it slightly, um, slightly off kilter, which I kind of like the look of anyway. Okay, so there we are. Um, uh, any of your streams show how to make things with wraps or soldering? 
Uh, Elise, we do have a bunch of, if you go right to our website after this broadcast, beadshop.com, many of our projects that incorporate so many things. I do some wire, other things. Unfortunately, we don't have any soldering things on there yet, but you never know when those might be coming down the pike. So sign up for our newsletter and you'll get uh, you'll keep up to date with everything we're doing here um, for streaming for beadshop.com. Plus all of our products and our sales. So exciting. So, uh, okay, let's uh, go back to this guy. I'm going to tighten this up here. And let's cut some wire. Now, I brought uh, some different wire for this. You could use a um, contrasting color. I have the, this is the vintage copper with this plated, um, uh, this um, antique brass chain. You could use this vintage bronze is great with it, right? Let me, let me get this open. And this is a great match if you want it to be a little more um, kind of monochromatic in color. And then you could do something that's bright and shiny. That is like this guy here, the um, the bright gold, which is also a pretty contrast for it. Um, the bare copper, you guys, if you wanted to really antique and have some dark wire, you could just use the bare copper and you could use it with any of these, then dip it in the liver of sulfur and then you can, um, um, then you can antique it all and uh, you'll be good to go, which is uh, which is good too. So do some experimentation on what works for you. I'm gonna use this vintage bronze with the links that I have here. I'm gonna spray up one more set of links because I actually wanna start wrapping with a round link to start. Okay, I'm gonna clip this away. I did want to mention, someone did ask about the soldering. You know, we carry both of my soldering books on beadshop.com, if I may be so bold to, uh, uh, to recommend it. Uh, it's a great book, if I do say so myself. If you go right to beadshop.com, you can see both of my books, uh, Simple Soldering as well as Metal Smithing Made Easy. Um, it's kind of fun. Right now on social media, um, there are uh, several uh, different jewelry groups that are working with my book and uh, kind of working through the sampler section and stuff. So I'm very proud of everybody who's making such great progress with their soldering. So they're meant to be read like novels. So go to Bead Shop, I'll sign the book to you, grab it, get it home and start reading it like your summer beach novel. And by the end of the books, uh, especially book one, you will know everything I know about soldering and it'll set you on its way. So. Um, <clears throat> I am pretty pleased to, uh, whenever I see you guys, how great the progress you guys are making is as metalsmiths. But back to wire wrappers. So I've cut, now you're asking me, Kate, about how much wire have you cut. This is, I don't know, about a foot, I guess. And again, it's 24 gauge. So I'm going to free some beads to work with. We, I brought some different beads. These are four millimeter rounds here. You could use a four millimeter fire polish. This is our matte amethyst, which is gorge, just beautiful. And this is our glittery silver matte um, four millimeter fire polish, which also I that has such like a clean contemporary look to it. Can you guys see that? I just, I really love that too, um, the way that that looks. Um, so I think it just really depends on, um, on, you know, what, what works for you guys and what, you know, what you like, but this glittery, um, matte silver is something that I'm really drawn to lately. Um, we also have in matte, and I saw, you know, when I was in Tucson, uh, just at the Tucson gem shows, matte is still everywhere. You guys, matte is um, all over, uh, and it's still really having a moment. I, uh, am in love with our matte beads, especially these four millimeter matte lapis rounds. Um, this would be a great color.
color contrast, I think, with those. So maybe I'll use those. You could also use something that's big. I grabbed these large six millimeter um, matte um, lapis would be amazing. You could add a little bit of sparkle. Those are six millimeter fire polish. So anything that's a round or a fire polish, any of those will work for you, okay? And again, um, you can see even this one that I did here, I used the size 10, let me get a little closer so you guys can see it, the size 10 Delicas. So anything goes with this. So you're like, Kate, great, the beads, get the beads, let's get to wrapping. Okay, let me get to wrapping. So let me clip these, let me free the beads. You know I like to free the beads onto their natural habitat, off the string and onto the bead mat and consequently onto the floor. Uh, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna wrap this all the way around this component. So I'm gonna begin, let me get in real tight so you guys can see me. I'm gonna try and stay in frame. Uh, I'm gonna start with my 24 gauge and I'm gonna come through I'm going to tighten it up here, and with that tail, I'm going to wrap just a couple of times. I'm just using my hands on this one because it's 24 gauge, it's pretty malleable. And I'm going to wrap it clean and straight so I've got two wraps that are um, nice and tidy here. Okay. And if you're watching on, whoops, I got that out of frame. If you're watching on your phone, um, on our Facebook feed, sometimes the um, comments obliterate what I'm doing when I get super tight like this. You can go ahead and swipe those comments off. You can swipe them, I think, to the left, or maybe you swipe right, I don't know, try it either way. But you can go into quiet mode and just see this here. Um, on your YouTube feed, the comments are over to your right, so they don't obliterate, but I just wanted to let you know that was a good little tip there. So now I'm going to start adding the beads, okay? So let me get the beads. I'm going to get a four millimeter matte lapis, and I'm just going to wrap it around. I actually want it to come on the outside here. You could you could have it sit on the outside like this. I think that's maybe what I want to do for this one. Or you could have it sit on the bead or on the loop, right? So here it is around the exterior of the loop and this is what it looks like when it's on top of the finding. So then you want to decide how much space you need between your wraps. I it doesn't really matter how much. You don't want your loop, your beads to be too close to one another. Um, you just want to be consistent, okay? So I think I'm going to make three wraps. Well, maybe four. Maybe I want to see a little more wire, okay? And this is, again, that 24 gauge, para, I'm using ParaWire, and I'm using, what am I using? The Vintage Bronze, okay? So uh, if <clears throat> your wire, as you're wrapping, is starting to kink a bit, just slide it through your nylon jaw plier to straighten everything out. You wanna keep your wire, I'm gonna open up the the screen just a little bit more. You saw it up close and personal, but let's get a little bit of a wider angle. Um, you want to keep your wire as straight as possible for this technique so it looks um, nice and even and not all bendy and you know that's a technical term is bendy that is. So uh, you can see for me to keep the tension, see how I'm pulling on the hand, my left hand here, on the ring, and I'm kind of pulling out with my right hand to keep the tension of, whoops, I need to wrap some more, to keep the tension of the wire nice and straight so my wire kinks as little as possible. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. 
I'm going to do this a little more in real Kate time and a little less in demo time so I can make a little bit of progress here. I'm wrapping four in between. That is so funny. Gita, get out of my head. Gita just posted on the live feed on Facebook that this project wants uh, is wanting her to make the Tree of Life pendant. I have the Tree of Life pendant slated for the end of this month, Gita. We're doing that on Facebook Live. So you'll see that. I think it's the last Facebook Live of the month here. So that will be coming up. In the meantime, you guys can go to that link that Gita just linked on our live Facebook feed. Or if you're not seeing that feed, you can go to our project section on our beadshop.com website, go to projects, go to class handouts. It was an old school beadshop.com class and click on uh, class handouts, click on tree of life and you can download the handout. It is really a good one. It's one that our, our former employee, uh, Nicole, um, who has since passed away, um, was her a project that she put together for us. So it'll be fun to do at the end of the month. I know, Gita, you and I are on the same page. See how quickly, you guys, this is coming together? You're just wrapping, really keeping that tension nice and uh, even and neat. Um, I cut about, when I cut the wire, I cut about 14 inches, maybe 12 inches or so of the wire here. If I run out, it's no big deal, okay? Um, uh, we're just gonna add some more. So here's a good question, let's see. Francesca, Francesca, why, why do you have this problem? Uh, the problem you always have is with the wire work hardening and snapping, especially when it kinks. It's a great question, and I'm gonna, sh so let me, sh let me put this aside for just a second. And let's get a kink in the wire up close and personal, okay? So I'm going to do this because it happens to all of us. So let's say if I'm wrapping and I'm wrapping, and you'll see this kink right here, and it's a tight kink like this, okay? One of the things that I do is I don't come in and try and straighten it out this way. If I try and straighten it out this way, I just pull that kink tighter and tighter and tighter until it's really in there and that's where it becomes that weak spot, okay? And as you work the wire straightener down your wire, it's work hardening it. And so it's like this, right? Work harden, work harden, you're getting down there and work hardening it, right? And like a rubber band, you know how when you wrap a rubber band or you stretch a rubber band and you kind of push it beyond um, its, I don't know, its tolerance point and it snaps. It's the same thing with wire. This tiny little point, let me get it so it's super tight so you guys can see it. This tiny little blip that's now in your wire, okay, that's the weak spot now and as we work it back and forth let's say that i was trying to you know un, you know wrap it or something like that and i'm doing this and pretty soon there it is it breaks okay so um and tammy had a great uh tammy get out of my head it's exactly right um working close to the piece so that you're not hardening the whole length. That's exactly right. But if you have that kink, the way that I undo it, let me get that kink in there again. So I've got that kink in there and it's super tight like this, okay? Before I even get my wire straightener on it, I'll grab the kink where the kink is I'll hold that in my chain nose plier and I'll just unwrap it this way and this way to open it up like this. Then I'll kind of pull it with my hands 
And with my chain nose plier, I want to make sure you guys can see this, see that I'm in frame. I'll give it a little hug, maybe this way, a little hug. Come on, I'm hugging you. There we go. To kind of gently smooth that kink out. There we go. Then, once it's mostly straight, right, it's pretty straight now. Once it's mostly straight, I hold it in frame. I'm sure that you guys can see. Then, once it's almost straight, that's when I get my nylon jaw plier. And it's kind of, it wants to stop over that kink. But see how it just moves everything out and there's no now there's no weak point and you can see even with this pair of wire I haven't really damaged the coating on it so just like you would untie a knot very carefully you'd, you'd go right here right to the core of the knot and try and pick it apart same thing with a tight kink come in unfurl it with your flat chain nose hug it a little bit with that chain nose to straighten it out just a little bit more and then with your straight uh, with your nylon jaw straighten it out that's what I would do okay so uh, let me see um, let me just make sure that uh, Mary Ellen had a good question does the way you thread the wire through the link make a difference in kinking it does so now that you've seen that and I mentioned it a little bit earlier but it's worth mentioning again so here we go. I'm ready to add my bead. <laughs> Thanks, Francesca. I do make it look so easy. But, you know, Wire and I have been friends for a long time. Um, I always like to say Wire is my spirit animal, and it's very true. Um, so see, Mary Ellen, I've put the bead on like this. And as I bring my wire around, this is what I automatically do between my index finger and my thumb. I just kind of whip this sucker around and I've straightened that wire in between my fingers as I go around okay then I pull it through and I'm pulling on both the unit that I'm wrapping around and the wire like this then I make a sharp turn to get the wire up so see how I keep that tension, and I'll do it at Kate speed, not demo speed. I'll keep that tension happening with the wire. See that? It's almost easier to do it with a long piece because you, um, you have a little more leverage for that, okay? It's almost like you're whip stitching in fabric. See that? So there we go. It's nice and um, it's nice and tight. Now I'll add another. I'll before I add a bead, I can straighten it if I want, and I will put on another bead. And let's bring it around again. Okay. So there we go. And I'll show you the back of this one. Okay. Um, so you guys can see what both sides look like. Here we go. And two and three. And look at this. This, I think, looks fantastic as an earring. And so I don't want to, it'll be like watching grass grow if I wire up this whole thing. So I'm actually going to stop it there. <clears throat> And we'll attach something to the top. So let me clip that off. Clip. Do this. Make sure that my side wraps are even, and they are. Clip. Use my chain nose to just burnish that wire down around the chain. Now let's say, just really quickly, let's say that I ran out of wire, all right? What I would do is I would stop at maybe like two wraps and then I'd just get my wire again, a fresh piece, wrap it around, 
right? And then just continue uh, continue on. And where the two wires meet here, just kind of burnish both wires down and it'll hardly be noticed. But look at what a beautiful component um, that is. I'll get up close and personal so you can see that. Let me double check the questions here. Um, here, uh, Cheryl asks, is there a trick when wrapping with bicones? I started a bracelet with them and broke the wire and it's a set of three. Um, no, maybe the wire, maybe you're not using the right size of wire. Um, it's kind of hard to guess, Cheryl, what it is, but um, bicones are pretty much the same, unless you mean briolettes, um, which are the drops that have the hole going up through the top. Um, we do have a great tutorial on beadshop.com um, and even on this last Facebook live um, bead shop live broadcast that I did this past Wednesday. I did um, I did wire wrap briolettes. Your issue is probably that your wire is too heavy for the briolette that you're wrapping. Um, and again, catch that Facebook live or uh, that bead shop live that we did this past Wednesday. It's here on our YouTube channel, also archived here on our Facebook um, video feed. Um, and I address a lot of stuff about that. Um, okay, um, Michelle also has, how often have you had to change the nylon pad uh, of your plier? I'll be honest, Michelle, I've never changed them, uh, ever. Even my old raggedy ones, though I probably should, but even when the pad of your plier, let me get this a little bit bigger, and these are pretty old, um, the pad of your plier can get pretty mangled, um, but it's pretty thick too. So um, I'll really be honest, I won't lie. I don't think I've ever changed a pad on these pliers. Um, what I have changed, I had to get a new pad um, because sometimes, and you can see this one here, the little plastic screws sometimes fall out, right? And this one has fallen out, um, but it doesn't make any difference really. When this one falls out, I'll probably have to change it. Um, but, uh, and when you get them, you actually, the new pads, uh, you have to drill them through with your Dremel. They don't come with holes already in them. So um, it's pretty simple, okay, uh, to do. Um, and Karen, we do carry the nylon jaw pliers here at beadshop.com. These are um, the kind that you can change the heads on. And the nylon of the head is soft yet firm. I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of the ones you see that are very inexpensive has the super hard plastic on the heads and they don't grip the wire very well. You want them to be kind of cushy. I mean, I can't press into them, but not so hard that they can't grip on the wire and really make a nice um, straight across, you know, clean swipe across the wire. So with nylon jaw pliers, like many tools, like all tools really, you do uh, get what you pay for. So I would not get a cut rate plier. Um, and again, we do carry them on the site. So I'm gonna come in and let's just wrap this up with making it into kind of a random little project here. Um, I'll pull this through and I'll wrap here on the top. And let's say that I was going to connect this to another something. Um, just go with me here. Uh, I'll pull this tight. You guys have seen me wire wrap a million times, but I'm gonna just come in, get, I just did a double little wrap, <clears throat> and now I'm gonna wrap uh, this wire around. I'll get up close so you guys can see it. My fingers are out of the way here, but I want you to be able to see that. It's nice and tight around there. There's a little bit of movement. Clip away my extra. Let me get uh, my other link of my chain here. There we go, that's nice and neat. And let me get uh, this. And where's my other 
This is my bigger one. I'm just going to come through my link. Wrap this around. I don't know, can you guys tell I'm making this up on the fly here? What a surprise. But it's kind of a cool way to connect um, two different pieces. Get that nice and straight. Because who's the boss of this wire? You guys knew I would have to bust that one out. Right? I can also get some wire in between here. So it's intentionally maybe a little bit more of a heavy duty look so it doesn't look so um, kind of thin. Let me clip away the rest of this. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera with my flourishes here. I'll get really close with the camera so you guys can see that. But check this out. This would, I think all I would have to do is, let me straighten this out. There we go. Is connect, I don't know, maybe I'd wrap some beads around the side, maybe here and here, slap an ear wire on, and you've got a cave earring, right? That's something I would wear all day long. But you just, you know, string it, string it, or slide it on a piece of leather, or um, hang this off of the three worlds chain like this, right? I mean, there's all places you can go with this. You could wire wrap, get the six mil in the, um, the lapis. And notice what happens to the lapis. You guys, can you see this? The lapis, when you get it, um, may look a little dry. Um, and it's just, that's just kind of how it is. Notice how when I start to work with the lapis, just the oils from my hands start to really make this lapis look like it should. So lapis is one of those stones that's almost living, really. Um, it just will look so much better the more you wear it. So I say, you know, this or this, the, the matte adventuring would look great to do something like this. Um, but you know, you can come through and then even if it's still together, you can just wrap a few around here, you know, like this, maybe on this side, whatever. But this technique is so easy to use across the board, okay? All we used, and let me just go over so everybody has this in their brains, and you can watch this, of course, again and again on our replay feed. Um, but you need to find a bead you like, right? Um, six millimeter or four millimeter, whatever works for you. It's semi precious, or like I talked about before, glass, you know, like this fire polish. You need something like that. And you just need some very, very simple tools. Um, this wire straightening plier, uh, or nylon jaw plier, we like to call it. The um, chain nose, a round nose plier here. And uh, a good wire cutter. This is our Zeron Maxi Shear that we just love. Um, you need some links, like this Three Worlds chain. Or you can use some of our really wonderful Nun Design components that we have here. And then for wire to embellish, I used 24 gauge, and the 24 gauge is great for all of this wrapping. You can see here are some of the links that I altered just slightly, um, the soldered chain links that you can play around with. Here's that other one. There you go. So, uh, so that's it. Pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. I can't wait to see what you guys create with this technique. Um, I'm gonna move the um, camera around so I can say a proper audio. So bear with me here. Just real quick like. Uh, if I can get this camera out, there we go. It's always 
Like I say, it's always fun being your own camera person. Here we go, here I am, very close. Let me make it a little brighter. Let me fix, let me fix my bangs. There we go, okay. So, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this fun frolic in wrapping, um, wire wrapping chain with beads. Um, I think it's always a kind of a, it'd be a fun, fast weekend project for you guys to play around with. Um, a couple of notes. Do remember we are having our enrollments have opened for our bead shop um, retreat this September, starting September 13th. We do have just a very few spaces left. So hop on it if you want to join us. You can go to beadshop.com for all of that information. Type in the journey uh, in the search box or at the top nav bar, you see a little um, uh, link for the bead retreat. Um, well, also, uh, next week, we have a special guest on our live broadcast. It's going to be great. The wonderful Ali Mori, um, one of our bead table members um, and customers and friends, is going to be with us uh, next week. And it's going to be an epic episode. She's going to share with her, you her year of uh, wrap bracelets that she made one a month using our monthly mix. Um, and we have a real um, great um, kind of support materials that go on that. Allie has created a lookbook for each month. Um, it's all compiled in one lookbook um, showing uh, different um, shots of the piece and everything she used. It's going to be really uh, a fantastic broadcast, one that you're not going to want to miss. So that's coming up next week. Um, and then Janice will be here the second week of March uh, doing a great broadcast as well. So we've been in the deep planning stages for Facebook Live. So the next couple of months are going to be a lot of fun. So uh, that's what we've got. Um, I can't wait to see you guys next week. If you are not part of the beadshop.com community on Facebook and you want to join it, just Hop on over. It's um, called The Bead Table and answer just a few little questions and we'll let you in and have, we're over 4,000 members over there. So there's a lot of information and great inspiration and stuff over there as well. You can also find a lot of inspiration on our project pages on beadshop.com um, as well as a whole ton of videos here on our YouTube channel as well as archived on our Facebook page. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining me uh, on this Free Tip Friday. It's great to be back on a Free Tip Friday. Uh, have a wonderful and creative weekend. Check your newsletters because we've got a great special going on right now that you don't want to miss. And I will see you guys next week with Ali Mori for another beadshop.com uh, live broadcast. Thanks so much, and we'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend.